everyone, it's me, Coral. I'm back and uh, I'm here with a short, sweet tag video. This is called the Finally Fall Tag. And this was created by a channel called Tall Tales, uh, but it looks like she doesn't make content anymore. So she did it, but I couldn't watch her video. I had to, I mean, I, I found it through, you know, I followed a thing that followed a thing that followed a thing until I got back to the originator kind of a thing. Anyways, this is obviously a tag centered around fall because it is the end of September. It's just finally now kind of starting to feel like fall where I live. Um, it's not 110 degrees at least any longer. So uh, more like 80, more like 80 degrees, which, you know, I'll take it. So, okay. The first question is, in fall, the air is crisp. Are these questions? I don't know. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. And for that, I picked Shadows of the Dark Crystal by J. Emily. This is a canon prequel to Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. I read this maybe like two years ago. It's very good. It's um, kind of like more young adultish, but being that it takes place in Thra, the land where the Dark Crystal is, it's very, it's a very rich setting. There's lots of strange creatures, lots of strange settings. I don't know if any of you have watched the um, new series that came out on Netflix, but if, I mean, it's that in this book. There are some of the same characters and everything. Okay, the next question is, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with heavy topics like loss or grief. And uh, this one isn't exactly, um, I feel like this question is gearing maybe towards the loss of a, of a person like dealing with grief because of a death, but this deals with um, a different kind of grief because the main character in this has two, she has lupus and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So she's dealing with like the loss and the grief of like her, like losing her body and losing her independence and losing the ability to be spontaneous and to, I mean, just get out of bed and like live like an abled body person can. And um, a lot of this book is that, and it was so, so, so well done. And um, the author's wife has similar ailments. So you can tell it was very personal to him. The character was very, it felt like a real person. So it was heavy, but it was a very good book. Number three is fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something. I don't think I have one for this because I don't read like, I mean, there are books that I've like nonfiction books I've read about certain topics, like um, books about, about the Donner Party, books about um, the Dust Bowl, I don't know, true crime stuff weird medical memoirs, but I don't think there's anything that it's like, and this taught me this lesson. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't know. So I don't have a book for that one. I don't, I was forced to read self-help books when I was a teenager and like the thought of reading one now as an adult like literally makes me want to fucking barf. So I don't read stuff like that. Uh, number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group that you'd like to be part of. Uh, and for this is kind of a recent one for me, but I would love to be one of Lada Dragwila's Yana Cherries that she um, kind of pals around with in this book. The Yana Cherries are like um, kind of cons conscripted military men. 
it, it's kind of complicated. They're like, um, kind of forced into it to be part of another country's military. But Lana has like a group of them that she's befriended and they follow her along on her conquests. And I would love to be a part of that group. Um, not because like I think I could kill people, but I just really love to be a part of some badass bitch taking back her home country. So <laughs> that's what I choose. Okay, number five is colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. Oh, okay, this is real lazy. But I just grabbed the red and orange and yellow Stephen King books, the hotter editions, because they're colorful and I don't have to dig through books. Here it is. Dreamcatcher kind of looks kind of pink on camera. There, I don't know. There you go. Okay, number six. Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. Uh, for this I picked Haunted by Chuck, by, blah, blah. for this I picked Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, this is a story where everyone is telling a story about their lives. And, uh, it's real weird. Um, Hmm, I didn't know if I, I don't know if I liked it that much. I think the, um, the, uh, kind of, what would you call it? The attitude by lots of people that this is, like, so shocking and, oh my god, Chuck, Chuck says that he has people faint at his readings of this and, like, I just don't fucking believe that because there's nothing shocking about this. So, that's my hot take for this video. Number seven, the nights are getting darker. Share a creepy read. I picked Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This one was very weird and creepy and short and it is about a man who sees a child at a store and um, then all of a sudden the child is like with him. And everyone seems to think this strange child is his and he can't convince anyone otherwise. So uh, it, it's weird. I think it's perfect for fall because, you know, candy, he has to eat lots of sour candy. And so it's very, it feels very Halloween-y and chilly and spooky. And it's a good one. It's a good one for a spooky night. <sighs> Number eight, the days are getting colder. Name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. I picked The Ice Dragon by George R. R. Martin. This is just a little tiny novella um, and it is about a young girl whose mother dies. After her mother's death, she starts getting visits from this ice dragon during the winter. It's kind of sad, she doesn't really have friends. Her father um, doesn't really like her a lot, it seems like. Like, he loves her, but he wishes she were different kind of a thing. So, like, her only friend is this ice dragon that she only gets to see during the winter. It's like a short story about their friendship, and the end is nice. So, it will warm your icy ice dragon heart. Okay, number nine, fall returns every year. Name an old favorite you'd like to return to soon. <laughs> One, I'm, hmm, I don't know how soon I'll get to this because it, it's not a very urgent on my mind, I guess. But a series I do like to reread a lot is the Aragon series by Christopher Paolini. This is one I read as like a young teenager and I really loved the series. Um, it is definitely one that I, I mean, as I've grown older, I've reread it and it's still, I mean, uh, like I realize now that it's maybe not written very well and maybe it borrows some ideas from some other uh, older fantasy works, but the nostalgia factor is high on this one and I do like to reread it every now and then. It definitely reminds me of being young and uh, yeah. Okay, number 10. 
fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. I don't know. I mean, I have like a little like pyramid shaped pillow that sometimes I prop my book on and I do have like a lumbar pillow. I think they're called. It's like one of those pit like sitting up pillows for my bed. Do you guys know what the I mean like I don't I don't have another word for that. A back pillow, a city up pillow. Um and I definitely use that when I read because I read mo most of my time is spent reading in my bed. Those are the accessories that I have. So that is the finally it's fall reading tag or it's finally fall. I'm an idiot. Um if any of you want to do this, or if any of you have done it, because I, I think this tag is a couple years old, let me know because I'd love to watch your video. Uh, and I will be back with another video soon. So until then, I will see you later.